everybody out. What's the matter? What's wrong? Snap into it, soldier. Oh, oh that man again. <laughs> Everybody out, on the double. Everybody out, snap into it, soldier. All in, four ranks. Now that you've been given your instructions, answer as many questions as you can, the best you can. You have 40 minutes to do it in. Go. Now begins your mental calisthenics. First, you'll take the Army General Classification Test. Take a tip from me and do your best on this test. And all the others you take at the reception center. The scores you make will have a lot to do with deciding what kind of an army job you'll get. If you get stuck on one question, skip it and go on to the next one. Those 40 minutes will be up before you know it. Time's up. Close your papers. See what I mean? I call your name, sound off, and move in. Geisler. Here. Garrett. Here. Esther. Go. Oh. Huntley. Here. Wait outside with your roster. Next. Next, man. Relax, Jones. Did you say relax? Sure, lean back, take it easy. I can't believe it. It's the first time I've heard those words since I got here. Yeah, they keep you pretty busy. Partly because they don't want to give you time to feel sorry for yourself. And partly because so many of you come through here, they have to keep you running to make room for the next bunch. <laughs> If you don't mind, what's the yellow card? It's called the Adjutant General's Office Form 20. It goes with you any place you go in the Army. All information about you is on it. Training, experience, everything. Everything I'll find out about you in this interview will go on it. I see if you're aware that you're a high school graduate. Or when you took a pre-induction course in radio. That's right. My last year in school, I took a course in radio, and I've been working at it since I got out. I got a letter from the man I worked for. Two types of condensers. Fixed and variable. Is the speed of radio waves the same as the speed of light? Yes. Name two audio coupling devices. Transformer and resistance. Okay. Um, now, what languages do you speak, read, or write aside from English? Only the French you learned in high school. Mm -hmm. What sports do you like? Oh, I play basketball and tennis in school, and I like swimming. Mm -hmm. Did you put on any school shows or take part in any? No, I don't think I'd be good at things like that. Well, how much did you earn when you're working full time? Forty a week. Now, what branch of the Army would you prefer, that is, if it's possible to put you there? Well, wherever I can use my radio knowledge. It's my work, and I'd hate to stop learning and maybe forget what I know already. What are my chances? Good. The same would apply if you're an electrician, machinist, telephone linesman, or anything else. It's to the Army's advantage as well as yours to have you doing what you know best. That always depends, of course, on where they need the most men at the moment. 
Naturally, if you fall under a classification that's completely filled, you'll be classified differently. For instance, if you're a lawyer and the Army doesn't need any more lawyers, you'll do something else. It's the overall picture that counts. The Army has to assign us men where they're needed most. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Not at all. That's what we're here for. Where did those tests I took come in? Well, your score on them will be considered along with your training, your experience, and the Army's needs in making your assignment. Well, what if I don't draw radio? Well, you may still get into it later when the Army needs more radio men. Reclassification can go on as long as you're in the Army. Well, I was afraid I was going to have to tell all this stuff before a hundred guys. Well, nobody likes to talk about his private business in front of people. The Army doesn't want to be any tougher than necessary. Well, it's the first private minute I've had as a private. Say, why do they call us privates anyway? They ought to call us publics. <laughs> Good luck, Jones. You've heard about those Army shots. Well, here they are. Let your arm down. Move on, please. Move on, please. Move on, please. You suppose it hurts much? Sure. Terrible. <laughs> Like being vaccinated dead when you were a kid in school. Let your arm down. Move Except on, I'm please. just a little nervous today. Let your arm down. Move on, please. Put your jacket on. Exercise your arm if it hurts. Move them around. Smoke up if you want to. Put your jacket on. Now that your processing is over, they start making a soldier out of you. You look at films and listen to lectures about military courtesy and sex hygiene. And the articles of war will be read to you. Learn close order drill. Dude, hook. Yep, hey. Of course, I picked it up right away. Some of the other guys had a pretty tough time with it. Dress right, hey. Ready, hunt. Left, hey. Right, hey. Yep, hey. Right, hey. Right, hey. Right, hey. Turn. The other way. Left, hey. Yep, hey. Right, hey. And finally, no matter what your classification test shows, you'll draw your share of the details. Why they're called details, I'll never know. A detail is something small, and this is the biggest broom I've ever seen in my life. The snappy outfit is called fatigue which makes sense. You get very fatigued, whatever you do in them. The phrase, when you're assigned to one of these jobs, is pulling a detail, which is nonsense, because everything you move, you have to push. This is called policing the company area. In plain English, picking up butts. It makes you wish the Army would give up smoking. Or you can pull the warehouse detail start using muscles you didn't know you had. I don't have to tell you what this is. And believe me, there's nothing funny about it except in cartoons. And once you've done it, they won't make you laugh. Hey, soldier, stop standing there mumbling to yourself and get after those pots and pans. 
Right, Sarge. Okay, Sarge. The best reason I know for working for a couple of stripes is to get out of this. Until you get two stripes, you'll occasionally pull this detail. And they're not so hard to get if you stay in there pitching. But more important than stripes, there's another thing that makes you want to get in there and pitch. No matter how bewildered you are, or how confused by this new life, when it's time for a retreat and you see the flag going down, you get a funny feeling inside. Pride, I guess you'd call it, at being part of a great team. And that pride sticks with you as long as you're in the Army. And finally comes a morning when you march down to the train to move out on your first assignment. They'll probably ease your pain about where you're going, just before you shove off. And I'm off on the next lap. Basic training. It's radio for me. All that happened in three to seven days? Yeah, it's plenty. But you'll find out you can handle it. Well, uh... How can you tell what everybody is? Like, who's a sergeant and who's a captain and... and... That's easy. You'll pick that up in 20 minutes. You just worry about what a corporal is and how to get to be one. Well, you've always been an independent sort of a guy. How do you stand for all this saluting? Fall in, fall out, get up, go to bed, eat now whether you like it or not. Nobody likes it. Well, what are you going to do? That's the only way you can run an army. Well, haven't you been in any jams for talking back or anything? I'm not that much of a sucker. The first thing you've got to do is make up your mind that you're not going to be that West Side High School quarterback. You're going to be a number. The sooner you realize it, the better you'll get along. What do they want me for? Why don't they leave me alone? We must have enough men by now. I've got a good job and things are moving along okay. Would they be taking married guys with kids if they had enough? Anyway, I'm in. Why not you? Well, is that any reason? I remember once when we were kids. Five of the Maple Avenue gang jumped me. You didn't stay out. You crowned Big Dutch with a bat. Yeah. Guess you're right. Well, whistle me the rest of the patter. Well, if you think the first week is tough, wait till you get to basic training. Then you know how easily you've been broken in. Well, give out. I might as well know now. Come on up while I get dressed and I'll tell you. This is certainly going to change my way of life. Well, we all finally arrived at our basic training center. All right, we will glad about that. I had an idea I was going right into radio. During the next six weeks, I found out how wrong I was. I learned interior guard duty. And interior guard duty is not done in the interior. It's done on the exterior. I drilled and I marched. I learned how to dig foxholes. What do you think you're doing, soldier? Get going. Okay, Sarge. Well, I guess his mother loves him. I had classes on map reading, army orientation, military courtesy and discipline, personal hygiene and first aid, camouflage, 
rifle practice inside and out. More map reading. Physical training. Obstacle courses. How to operate as a member of a combat team under conditions you run into overseas. Brother, if you're not in shape, they'll put you in shape. So take it from me, get yourself in shape before you go in. You have no idea how you're cheering me up. I don't want to kid you, it's tough. But millions of other guys can take it. Well, what happened after the six weeks? I started radio school. But you know radio. We've been at it since we were kids. It doesn't matter what you know. You've got to learn it the Army way. They've got a saying. There's the right way, the wrong way, and the Army way. Well, don't you ever have any time for yourself? Sure. Well, what do you do? Well, you've got the post exchange called the PX. It's sort of a combination Army, local store, and club. Drinks. Hamburgers, stamps, or what have you. You can sit around and cool the old tonsils while griping about the army. That you will do from the day you get in till you're discharged. The army considers griping the basic right of every soldier and gets worried about you when you don't. Then there's the company day room with books, billiard tables, recreation hall, camp movies, free dances and shows, all kinds of sports equipment. And if you want to go to church, it's there for you, every kind. If you happen to be the kind of guy who needs someone to talk to you, the chaplain's always glad to listen to your troubles and keep them strictly to himself. Then there's your personal affairs officer, your legal assistance officer, and your company commander to help you when you need them. If there's trouble at home, the Red Cross gets in touch with the family and gives you the lowdown. You get good doctors and dentists. Well, if you're near a town, you get a pass for the evening. Between the USO and other outfits, you've always got some place to go. They really do their best for you. It's a long, long way from home, but you've got to give the Army credit for the best job possible. Well, I guess one of the things I mind most is not getting to college. Well, there's a thing called the Armed Forces Institute. You take correspondence courses and get regular credits for finished courses. Well, lots of schools count them toward graduation. There's no reason for your head to stop working for the duration. Well, suppose I don't get what I want and wind up in some other branch. What's the training like? The first six-week basic is about the same in all branches. After that, you begin to specialize in something. Machine gunner, welder, tank driver, what have you. Well, after basic, you might get up to a year's training in the unit you're assigned to. Well, I can only say one thing. Gee, I wish I could somehow catch up to you and get in your outfit. <laughs> Me too. Come on, let's go. Time marches on. Hey, soldier, what do you think you're doing there? Come on, get going. Hey, Bart, let me a show, will you? How do you like that guy? Would you believe I went to school with him? Well, I suppose his mother loves him. See what I mean? Thank <laughs> you.